We do a lot of thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysms and we deal with a lot of the patients that suffer from aortic aneurysm disease. It is a continuous disease uh, and multifocal aortic aneurysms is not an uncommon situation. So redo uh, surgery in aortic surgery is not an uncommon uh, thing for a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon to encounter, but it is a dreaded uh, surgery. It has a higher rate of complication and morbidity and mortality. And so we thought, especially in the um, advancement of the endovascular um, treatments, we thought that we can look at our own experience in our center, uh, try to see what are the outcomes and try to identify some risk factors for poor outcomes, compare it with non-redo and maybe find uh, specific uh, populations in this cohort that would benefit from a different approach. So some of the findings were as expected. For example, it was 14% of our total thoracoabdominal repairs that were redo. Um, so it shows that it is common. Uh, the mortality was higher. Uh, the early mortality was higher in the redo cohort. It was 23% also uh, expected. But we, what we did find from our uh, analysis, and we did a multivariant analysis, we found that there were four risk factors that were uh, significant for the early mortality. It was age above 70, um, low uh, GFR uh, in the pre-op um, patients, and uh, extent of the aneurysm, extent three, was significant for early mortality, and the most significant factor was emergency surgery. And when we combined those factors, we managed to come up with a model for predicting uh, early mortality, which was the interesting part. Um, based on this model, um, patients with low risks, um, which was patient that had none of those risks but a redo uh, surgery alone, he had a low uh, early mortality of 11%, which is very acceptable uh, result. But if you have a patient that has all four risks and um, for in the had to go through a redo procedure, the risk of early mortality was as high as 82%. And this is something new and very significant uh, for us to understand and for the patient to understand who's going through that procedure. Based on those findings, um, actually it is important to know uh, this entity because it, it is common. Uh, for the low-risk patient, it is still a good option, um, the open redo repair. But maybe in the selective cases where the patients are high risk, uh, we need to consider offering the patient um, hybrid procedure or a complete endovascular procedure um, instead of open. If they are unsuitable anatomically, then consider maybe staging the repair and uh, hopefully uh, lowering the mortality of it. Uh, but we also, I think, we need to keep in mind for those high-risk patients with an 82% mortality. Um, it is also okay to talk to them, give them the option of not doing the procedure. Um, it is all, we, there are still those, those percentage of patients that might not benefit from the repair. I think it's an interesting uh, era that we live in. There is a lot of advancement in the endovascular repair, and I think those set of patients um, in the future, um, we need to look into their results um, when they are repaired in endovascular and see what improvement happens there. Uh, try and, and go into the risk factors that affected the, this population and try and understand it better and maybe improve it.